one of the new North Shield starter scribe kits. In this box, we have a set of eight different paints that are used um, frequently. These are the uh, common paints that you would find in the northern, northwestern Europe and their illumination. Um, a couple of them are also used in Italians, but if with a set like this and a little bit of mixing on your own palette, um, if you take a little bit of paint at a time, you can get most of the colors that you would need for most of the period, really. Yeah. Um, some of the colors for the Celtic yellows are not in here, so it's not a good set for that, but it's a good set for, for other things. Um, the colors that we have in here, we have a good white. We've got... Um, burnt sienna and burnt umber so that you have the red brown and uh, more chocolate brown. We've got black. We've got yellow ochre for the goldish things which are good in this kingdom. We've got vermilion and alizarin crimson so you have one of the bright orangey reds and you have one of the bluish reds. Uh, up here we have minium. Minium is a purple that's made out of alizarin crimson and ultramarine and a little bit of white. There's uh, actually instructions for how to mix this in the Gottingen model book, so we know that this is the right blend to get that particular purple. Um, we've got uh, up here some indigo and the ultramarine I mentioned before, and uh, viridian, which is a, a deep bluish green, and then um, a green that's a mixture of several different pigments uh, that's used for some of the, um, if you're doing work that has sprays of leaves and flowers and things on it, this is a more uh, olivey yellow green compared to the bright bluish green that you get for Viridian. And they're numbered, and we have a list, so if, if you don't have to remember what I said. Okay. We also have for you a water dropper that has water that's got a few drops of gum arabic in it. Gum arabic is the binder or the glue that helps hold the pigment to the paper because all paint is really is um, bits of pigment that are held together in a binder um, that will then hold it to the page. So all of these pigments uh, come from brands of gouache that have been made using gum arabic as a binder and if you re-wet it several times it is a watercolor so you can re-wet it. Okay? Um, it's not going to dry up and be forever like if, if you had uh, acrylic paints. Um, so you can use this over and over again. But I do like to have a couple of drops of gum arabic in the water that I use to wet it. And so when I'm getting it wet to start with after it's dried, because it will dry out, uh, put a couple of drops of this on top of the paint when you're starting. Um, and I know that I try to have different water, clean the brush water pots for different colors so that you're not muddying your paints by putting dirty water in. If you yeah. always use stuff like this to wet it, then you're going to keep the paints nice and clean. It's also what the, the nice screw top lids are for. It'll keep them from mixing with each other too much. We have brush cleaner so that when you're finished, you have nice clean brushes so that you're not um, cross-contaminating the different kinds of paint. To put the stuff onto the paint, the paint, we do have three brushes. We've got a 20 aught, which is really good for the white work on top. I don't know if you can see how fine that is. Get some paper over so you can see past it. Um, very, very fine tip with reasonably long bristles um, so that it can hold enough pigment so that you can get a decent line. And then two other small brushes um, to use for the larger, the base color areas. Mm -hmm. We've got a croquis oil. Um, sometimes called croquis. Uh, it's a French word, but basically most of us call it a croquil. It's a very fine point um, nib on a holder so that when you're doing outlining, if you're using outlining in ink, or even you can make, um, wet this down enough so that it's thin as ink, you can use a quill like this to, to do the outlining. Part. And lastly, but not least, in this little envelope, we have samples of different kinds of paper that you could use to make scrolls. Awesome. We've got some uh, the Stonehenge vellum surface paper. We have uh, a piece of Bristol vellum surface paper. 
We've got some pergamonata, which is a vegetable-based or a cellulose version of vellum. If you hold it up to the light, it's a little bit translucent where the paper isn't. And then this is the real thing. This is a piece of calfskin vellum where you, you can feel the two different sides, the flesh side and the hair side. Feel the difference oh, between them. Okay. That's really good. Yeah. That's really uh, nice. If you're going to use the pergamonata or the vellum, um, before you write on it, you want to try to remove the hand oils from, the, from people holding it. So take uh, a white eraser, or um, if you have pounce, just like a fine powder, put it on there and rub it off. Um, I've also used cornstarch in the past. You want something that, where you can rub it um, and just really fine grade grit to get the oils off and to um, break, break down some of that really, really smooth surface so that the paint it holds on a little bit better. It's like the difference between yeah. trying to put paint on a piece of plastic and put paint on, on something that's been that's got a little bit more porous to it. So that'll give you um, some things that you can use to try out and see which of these materials is going to be the one that you like the best. Yeah. Now, this one is the most expensive by far of the list, but if you use small pieces like this, you know, it is there. it's not too bad. Um, there are, these are the artist trading card size, so if you have artist trading cards at your store, you can get more envelopes if you want an individual envelope for each one. And there you go. I've got a place to start. Okay. One of the reasons we're doing this is because it's much easier to get tubes of paint mixed up where you have um, one tube will fill ten trays, and then... I know I've got several tubes of paint at home that I never got to the bottom of it before it got hard. And this way, I can buy a set, fill up, refill my little pots, and nine more people can get a chance to paint too. Okay. Enjoy them. I will. <laughs>